Hi, welcome back to Two Cells, One Packet. Now, some of you have asked for this, so we are going to give it to you. Uh, this will be a video describing the functions of the screen, the settings that you can change, the data that you can view. Uh, and at the end, we'll talk about the suspension adjustments that you can do, uh, which is the preload and the dampening. So follow along and hopefully you get your passion soon. So we have the passion screen here. Now this is the screen you're gonna see when you turn on the device. Uh, if you turn it on with the power button, you have the headlight button here that toggles the headlight on and off. And then these two are the buttons that you're gonna use to toggle through the settings. Now, without going to the settings menu, if you press this button, you'll see that we go from distance and that single trip. We have total mileage. We have Celsius, which is the motherboard temperature. We have voltage, which is the current battery voltage. We have amps. So when you're riding, if you look down, you can see how many amps are being pushed to the motor, as well as volt amps, which is the same as watts. Now, in order to change the settings, you'll want to hold down the OK button, which is the button on the bottom left. Holding this down for a couple of seconds will show you the unset settings and then it'll show you strong. Now you're gonna use this button to scroll through the different settings and you're gonna use the OK button to change the values. So we're gonna go back to the very beginning. After you've got into the menu, you'll see here that the mode is strong. If you wanna change that, you can press the OK button to toggle between soft, medium, and strong. The next setting is the pedal angle adjust. Now with the pedal angle adjust, pressing it up will increase the number, which will increase the positive tilt. So this is the front of the wheel, the front of the wheel will go upwards. Now you can go all the way up to setting 20. Now a little lesser known fact is the fact that if you press it once quick, it will move upwards. If you hold it for one second and release, it'll actually go downwards. However, if you do wanna cycle through it, when you cycle to 20 and back to zero, and doing the short presses will go into the negatives. So there's two ways to do it. Now the next setting is the OS tilt back, which is the speed at which tilt back will be triggered in order for your safety so you don't have to listen for the beeps. Now with this setting, you can go anywhere from 10 kilometers in increments of five, all the way to 100. And once you get to 100, when you go to the next setting, two is 200. So for Leaperkim, previously they used 280, which meant turned off. And in the patent, they're using 200. Now in the OS tiltback percentage, this is the PWM tiltback. So at what PWM or safety margin you want the wheel to give you that physical feeling of tiltback in order to prevent you from cutting out. Now this can go pretty high. so. Typically, I like to set my wheels around 70 to 80% for safety reasons. Uh, if you really do want to push it, you can push it higher. Now, this is the setting at which the alarm or the beeper will turn on when you're at speed. Now, you can set this as low as 10 kilometers per hour. Now, similar to the other settings, 200 again is considered off. Now, the brightness is the brightness of the screen. Now, I don't see the reason why you'd want to go below 100% unless you want to save that battery, but I always tend to put it at 100%. Now, this one is for calibration. If you find that your pedals are not reacting properly, you can go through the setting. Otherwise, we will ignore this one. Sleep mode is for transport mode. You can ignore this one unless you're shipping your wheel. On the miles per hour KPH, this is where you can set your display to either show miles per hour or kilometers per hour based on where you are located in the world. Next, you'll see the voltage. This is for a calibration. So if you find that the voltage of your wheel is off, uh, you can go through the setting and change it. However, I would not suggest for most people to touch this. L mode is actually low battery mode. I have turned it on, which allows you to ride the wheel down to a lower voltage. Now with this setting, you will sacrifice the battery health if you continuously run very low voltages on per cell basis. Typically, I would suggest to leave this off. 
until the time that you get tilt back due to a low battery and you turn it on just so for you to be able to go home as a safety net. The next setting is the high speed mode. So this will allow you to run higher speeds, tend to turn this on. However, the flip side of that is it will cause more wear on your wheel. Now this setting is the burr mode coined by InMotion or angle cutoff. So in this setting, you can actually set it anywhere from 35, uh, for 35 degrees all the way to 70 degrees. So that is the summary of all the features that are adjustable by the user on the screen. Next, we will talk about the suspension adjustments. So with the suspension, there are three different settings that you can adjust. The first is the preload, which will affect the sitting position of the wheel after you've stepped on it. The compression dampening, which will affect the ability for you to bottom out by constricting the movement speed. And thirdly, the rebound dampening, which will prevent you from getting pogoed off the wheel or the feeling of being pogoed off the wheel, again, by restricting the speed at which the suspension can move. Now, with all these settings, more is not always better. you got to find out the right setting for you. Now, I've set up this just for demonstration purposes. You can see that the yellow collar is all the way at the very bottom. Now this is the maximum preload that you can place on the wheel. When you compare that to the left side, which is the rebound, the red side, you can see that this gold collar is all the way at the top. Now this is the minimum amount of preload that you can have on the wheel. Now the center, you can see the flathead screwdriver. This will adjust the rebound dampening. And on the flip side, the blue side, the flathead will adjust the compression dampening. So if you feel that you are a little bit heavy for the wheel and you sit too low, you can crank this preload up to a different setting, making sure that you count the rings. So when you're adjusting the preload, just make sure that both sides match. Now, in order to do that, you see these engraved rings on the side. What you can do is you can adjust the preload and just make sure that you count the same number of rings on both sides to make sure that everything is matched up. Now, when it comes to the rebound dampening, increase it, which is to rotate it in the clockwise direction. That will increase the amount of dampening, which will decrease the movement speed. So if you increase that value too high, the wheel will feel very dead and not responsive. However, if you make it too low, you'll feel like you're being popped off the wheel. So in this scenario with the rebounds a lot simpler, what you should do is jump on the wheel and bounce on it a couple of times. If you feel that the wheel is dead, decrease it, which is counterclockwise. And if you feel that it's too lively, you can increase the dampening, which is the clockwise direction. Now, as you can see, I've backed the preload all the way back out. Now, I believe this to be around a 17 or 18 millimeter socket wrench. So if you use a socket wrench, it may be a lot quicker and safer for you to do this. Now, with the compression dampening, you'll want to use your flathead screwdriver. Again, there are 20 clicks between maximum dampening and minimum dampening. So the best way is to make sure that you back it all the way out one way and count your clicks. And this way you can adjust it perfectly the way you want. Now it might be hard to see the clicks on video. As you rotate it between each setting, you'll notice that it falls on a certain ridge. So right now I have the wheel set to the minimum amounts of compression and rebound dampening. I'm gonna jump on it and you can see the results. So if you could hear that clunk, that clunk is the bottoming out as I jump on the wheel. Now if I crank the compression dampening, 20 clicks. You can see that it takes more effort to bottom it out, but I can still bottom it out on a normal just jumping on it. So this is why I feel that you can kind of prevent bottoming out as much as you can, but even with the proper settings, uh, you can't remove the probability of bottoming out. So that's the end of the screen settings and patent suspension setting video. Uh, hopefully it sheds some light and helps you set up your wheel when you do get it. 
Keep in mind that this wheel is the 66 pound version. So the video that you saw of me jumping on it and bottoming it out is the heaviest spring you can buy. All right, hopefully this is useful. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe if you like it. And you may also turn on your ding dong ding dong to receive notification of our latest content. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.